what MC Mobile is, is it's a new concept, but what we're doing is making a complete package where we're using a tablet that's going to be used in multiple functions. So first we start out with our LN150, mm -hmm. and this is going to be our elevation reference. And what we can do with this, it's, it's a laser that tracks a prism. So as we set up that laser and set it up to, to the prism that's on a known control point, what we've brought here into the booth is a pad, you know, simulating what would be groundwork in real life. So as a contractor, I'm going to go out and set this tool up, put it on my known elevation point, sing, bring it into my prism, and now I can go up and do the layout. So tasks that I used to have to send out to a subcontractor, to a survey firm, or tasks that I was pulling tape for, I can now move to use the technology to do it myself. So I can run around here and do my layout with my tablet. So we have this tablet here. I'm just gonna steal this from you for a minute. So this tablet I'm using, and it's not on right this second, so I apologize for that, we'll do that after. But this tablet is my data collector. So I've got my, my layout navigator set up. I can do my layout. This acts as a data collector. Then when I'm done collecting the layout information, I can step aside, jump in my truck, and take that and make my design. So I can move the elevations around to see what I need to do. All on this same tablet. So this data collector has become my design tool. Now I'm done with that, I take it and I jump in my tractor. So I go to a CTL or a mini excavator, and this tablet has now become my data or has become my control box. So what I'm doing with that is using this tool in every aspect of the job. So now that it's my control box, I go to my CTL with the attachment or my mini excavator and I execute on that design I just completed. So I'm cutting to the grade that's in there, either in ind indicate mode or automatic mode, but I'm using a machine control application off of this tablet. Then when I'm done doing that, at the end of the day, I can hop back onto my prism, capture everything I've done, and generate an invoice because I've just proved the work I've done and I feel good about it. I can put everything on the truck, go on to my next job. So really this is kind of a day in, day out, use it every day for that job. So scalability, I can move this between an excavator, CTL, um, I can grow my business, I can move it around to have different machines within my fleet. But really what this made for, it's an entry level machine control system at a price point that has that. So. It is it's very simple to use. We're expecting a dirt guy to use this himself, and he's gonna do the layout, the design, and then the execution all off this MC Mobile tool. Wow. Well, if you look at the sheer number of machines in scale, the number of compact machines is double, triple, quadruple what they are for full-size machines. I think we ran some numbers for 2020. I think it was, 7,500 dozers that were manufactured that were out in the market in North America. That number for CTL dozers is 75,000. So there's just so many people using compact equipment, whether they're you know doing these the, the build in place, stand up walls, um, putting gravel into a shell that's already up where you can't get away with GPS. Um, traditionally, a full blown machine control system can sometimes outprice the CTL itself. So the take rate, it's just unachievable. Now with this simplified version and able to do all of these things out of the same box, it just makes perfect sense for somebody that's entering the business, they've bought their first CTL, they've, you know, just, they're an entrepreneur that's in the dirt business. This is the technology they've been waiting for. The price point makes it easy. It's not a hard one to swallow um, at that price and the flexibility of doing all these things. They're gonna control their um, material, so they're not going to have too much material or more than they bid for. They're not going to have third-party costs with a surveyor coming in to, you know, charge them $150 an hour to lay out some stuff that they just pulled off themselves because they don't have a complex design. They just need to do simple tasks. So all of those things that are out there with these, there's there's certainly a time and place for all the survey instruments, but a dirt guy doesn't need that. He can do this himself. I think machine control is an accepted technology now. Um, so it's not, uh, you know, conceptual where, where somebody's taking a big gamble. I think it's well established. Um, what we're going to see here with this is the people that, you know, thought it was out of range, having a look at it and saying, this is achievable financially and in terms of skill set, because I don't have to be a surveyor running a machine. I can be a dirt guy using some technology. Um, the price point where it used to be, you know, $80,000, $90,000 to outfit a dozer, 
that's not the case here. And if I look at the, the you know, the LM150 to lay um, my job out, very easy to use, very achievable. And it really, at the end of the day, I put everything in a couple of suitcases and I'm back to the next job. So I think the take rate is going to be very high. I think the industry has been waiting for this. Um, you know, we're all a little bit slow for the last two years, um, but it, it's it's here, it's there, it's it's going to be everywhere, and it's just a matter of us getting it out regionally to put some people in to try it out. We'll, we'll be doing regional demonstrations and letting people try it out in road shows and rodeos and that kind of stuff because really the proof's in the pudding. Like seeing is believing, we put butts in the seats, they're going to say, okay, this is what they said and this is what I need. I think really as the margins get tighter and the jobs are requiring more precision, it's, I mean, it's not going to be an official requirement, but you're going to be hard pressed to not be playing with those same people if you don't tighten up your game. Like it's, you got to manage your material, you got to manage your production. There's only 24 hours in the day. And if you're overspending on material, that comes out of your profit. It, with with the world slowing down, everybody could stop and, and run an ROI. What is my return on investment? And everybody thinks they know what they're doing. But if you break it down, how much are you paying for material? If, if I saved you half an inch across that whole job, how much is that? If I was to give you two hours more production day, how much is that? You know, if I if I was able to take your unskilled operator and turn them loose or buy them a couple years experience because now his hydraulics are automatic and he's not trying to read a grade stake, it's happening for him, how much is that? So if I start taking all of those pieces and moving them into a return on investment calculator, it shows that these systems are paid off very quickly. Like I like to take the number of the system and then work that backwards against these cost inputs and I switch that around from renting to profitability, it's a no brainer.